The heart of the company and entire production is located in the southwest of England. Situated in rural Somerset, with a site occupying 10 hectares, Pneumatic now employs over 700 people. The formula to this success is no secret and remains unchanged from day one. A clear commitment to innovation, quality and price. I'm Stuart Cochrane, I'm the Manufacturing Manager of uh, Pneumatic International. Uh, I look after all of the manufacturing facility at our factory in, Chard in Somerset. Uh, we make here all of the products that we deliver to the UK, uh, European and global market. Um, we have just under a thousand people working here um, and we make a product catalogue of 5,000 um, machines and we make over a million units each year. Um, Pneumatic International's most famous product in the UK is the Henry vacuum cleaner um, and uh, out of the over a million units that we sell um, each year, 95% uh, of them would be a Henry type vacuum cleaner. Um, we sell similar vacuum cleaners uh, across the world um, but not all of them are branded with the uh, Henry brand. The three words that we use at Pneumatic International to describe ourselves is innovation, quality and price. So our company mission statement is wrapped up in those three words of innovation, quality and price. But we have an additional mission statement within manufacturing which we, we say is security for all. And for all we mean our customers, our owner, our employees, our community. Um, and it's important that we consider how we provide security for all of those stakeholders. So to, to be secure for all of those people, we believe we have to be go globally competitive uh, as a manufacturing business. And that global um, competitiveness is driven by productivity and quality, and productivity and quality is at the heart of our automation strategy. In order to be globally competitive, we believe that we have to implement the principles of lean manufacturing throughout our business and to address um, productivity and quality issues right throughout our business. Overriding all of that comes safety first in terms of making sure that we're producing our products in a safe working environment for our employees. Um, but in order to be productive in a global marketplace, um, we feel that we have to have very high levels of productivity um, and that comes from analysing everything we do, um, applying the principles of lean manufacturing but also looking at ways of using automation to support our employees to be as productive as possible. Our key approach as a business is that if we're more productive and support our people to do a more productive job and extend their working lives will deliver security for all for us as, as a business um, and achieve our innovation quality price um, company objectives. If we're a traditional business with low productivity and no automation, we won't. And so this is absolutely at the core of our manufacturing strategy. We didn't really have the ability uh, to do any kind of uh, robotic R&D within the organisation. We've always been quite good at doing um, mechanical systems and implementing, designing, manufacturing, fabricating uh, and implementing mechanical systems. Uh, and we have uh, our own production engineering department and tool room um, who, who are good at that. But then um, increasingly we were seeing opportunities to use those mechanical systems with improved technology and it was the knowledge to be able to integrate that technology with the mechanical systems that we were good at that we didn't have within the business. So what we were really looking for from our relationship with the RIF was a way of developing um, in a, 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 an agile way of being able to get that technology into our mechanical systems.
So we originally um, went to visit BRL, Bristol Robotics Laboratory, in 2011. And uh, we were excited by what we saw uh, within the environment of the workshops and the laboratories and how we could see that, that um, those approaches and that technology could be uh, applied in our uh, working environment. And then when Farad came to visit us, he could see how the work that was being done there would apply and help us within our manufacturing environment. And what we needed to do then was to work out a mechanism that our organisations could use to work together. Um, and at the time in 2011, there wasn't really an easy way for us to be able to do that. We could, we could both see the potential in each other's organisations, but we... It took us some time and some work in terms of being able to work out how to engage with each other. Um, and the things that worked well in that were the things that um, were delivered via the RIF structure. So we came on the uh, short courses that were delivered by the RIF that began, began to give us the knowledge that we needed in terms of uh, automation and technology and how we would apply that to our environment. Um, we progressed from that uh, to engaging a placement student to work for a summer at the robotics laboratory and now into a knowledge transfer partnership um, with, uh, with, with uh, BRL and the University of West of England. But really for me, if the RIF structure had existed in 2011, that uh, those issues of how do we engage with each other would have been immediately solved we would have had a mechanism we would have been able to do the work that we did through the summer project through the RIF structure and our feasibility studies would have been completed much quicker our approach and our justifications for progressing down the knowledge transfer partnership route would have happened sooner and instead of starting a knowledge transfer partnership in 2015 we would have probably been finishing a knowledge transfer partnership in 2015. Um, main objective from uh, the engagement with the RIF was to do a feasibility study on how difficult or easy it would be to uh, automate the production of products that hadn't originally been designed for automation and to trial those processes without us committing to the machinery and equipment um, that we would need to to do that in-house. Um, and then to see, as I say, how feasible it would be and what um, risks or constraints we would need to take account of um, if we were then going to go for a, a full-scale process uh, of, of automating those systems. Uh, what we would then also uh, need to do is to train our in-house staff to do those uh, integrations uh, and to build those um, automation systems because to do that from a commercial route probably wouldn't be cost-effective um, as those products may change um, or, or our volumes may change, making that automation um, uh, less viable for those products and needed to move to another range of products that we would, we would like to automate in those, uh, in those situations. We followed that up with short courses in mechatronics and robotics and that led on to the knowledge transfer partnership looking at applying those techniques into our business. From a practical perspective, working with the RIF meant that we could do the experimentation in automation without buying the capital equipment that we needed to do that experimentation. Um, but in 2011, that mechanism didn't exist, whereas now it exists, our engagement in 2011 would have been easier. I've sat at meetings where people have told a similar story to ours, where we've said, we've got some good mechanical skills, we've got some great tool makers, we've got some good you know, electrical mechanical maintenance people, but that step up to say, let's be, you know, go from good mechanical electrical maintenance tool room production engineering people to automation engineering and integrate those systems is a step up that's currently beyond, I think, training packages that are around. The, the, the next development we see with uh, using the RIF is that at the end of our knowledge transfer um, programme that will be limited 
uh, by the scope of the programme in terms of what we'll be able to achieve in that. But we will have additional knowledge and other projects that we will want to explore. We'll be able to explore them at a slightly deeper level because we will have more knowledge about the subject. But those projects will still need additional knowledge, additional information, additional feasibility studies that we can come back to the RIF and to be able to explore um, for the new projects. I see so many opportunities for automation in manufacturing, I've not thought beyond that at, at this point in time. My responsibility lies for manufacturing. Um, I, I can imagine um, as we get better and better at automation, the sorts of things that used to be very expensive and, and out of reach, you know, like the things a bit like automated guided vehicles and automated um, pick and dispatch, um, uh, pick and pick and uh, put away processes for warehouses. Um, but I guess my feeling is most of that technology is pretty well known and understood. I don't see. Uh, if I wanted to automate my warehouse now, I could probably go to a dozen suppliers mm -hmm. that would give me a fully integrated system. And I'm not sure where I'd come away and say, okay, I need to take that bit of that system and that bit of that system and that bit of that system and integrate it. And there's a similar challenge that I've got in manufacturing. Um, because once people have worked out how to put a pallet away, it doesn't really matter what's on that pallet. The information that I was sharing with the RIF was not information that anybody um, uh, couldn't have found out themselves in a, in, in a, in a really easy way. Um, and, and, and I considered, uh, you know, one of those, the, the consideration for us is we're putting effort into improving our production processes to make them safer, produce better quality and make them more productive. And I considered whether the market, whether we should be, how open we should be in terms of that knowledge. And then I thought, well, actually, you know, name a successful factory that isn't trying to improve their safety, quality and productivity. You know, if, if any of our competitors were trying to guess what we were doing within our um, manufacturing environment they would probably guess that we were trying to improve our productivity they would probably guess that an element of automation in in terms of uh, our processes would probably help I, I, I you know very much our feeling is we're not doing anything that people wouldn't expect us expect us to do it does answer it the important thing for us is we introduced the concept of what we were doing before it got anywhere near the shop floor it still isn't uh, in the in the in the interaction that we're having with the riff on the shop floor yet but we've started to improve our production processes by the use of automation in terms of very simple robotic loading aids for boxes and things like that um, but very much our philosophy has been that our devices are there to assist people to do their job, not to replace people doing the job. And the, the phrase that I learned, the word that I learned at the riff of cobot, is the word that we've been using to introduce this to um, our workforce. So we don't talk about automation solutions, which, which, which sounds as though they've got a replacement element. We talk about cobots. We talk about using automation solutions to do what automation is good at uh, in terms of repeating tasks and lifting heavy things and moving things around and still needing our staff to do the things that they're good at which is looking and checking for quality uh, picking and selecting the right components to go into the product um, and and managing and shaping the process down the production line so we've very much talked about it as the cobot solution the the uh, ability for us to help people to do their jobs and um, the, also the, the, the approach that says we can extend people's working lives. You know, the, 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 there is no, we want to minimise the physical limitations um, or the, the, the physical requirements that somebody would have to do our jobs. I think the strongest advantage for me is 
having Farid, who speaks both languages, who understands our challenges and the, you know, scale of opportunity, but also the scale of um, resource and ability within our organisation and how to match that with the resource, ability, opportunity within the RIF. Um, and, and, and for me, that really helps in terms of, like I say, speaking the same language and understanding how the two organisations can mesh. I would recommend the RIF at Bristol. Um, it now has uh, an easy way of looking at the feasibility and the risks associated with robotics and automation solutions for a particular application. Uh, it, it, it's an accessible way of getting those answers that would cost time and money to get those answers in any other way. Yeah. <laughs>